Hey everybody, what to do? Now today's apparently uh, suicidal prevention day. Like, I didn't know this was a thing until I went on the Discord and I see somebody mention that today is that day. And also they don't have an official day for this, but I guess every year people who are in charge of this decide what day we're gonna make this and today happens to be that day. So I kinda wanna talk about uh, depression, anxiety, and suicide for people who are having these thoughts or people who are leaning towards it or just have depression, anxiety in general, right? Now, I'm a person that has had depression for about 15, over 15 years, to be on the safe side. Now, some people are saying like, damn man, 15 years, get some help, bro, like a book. Like, I've actually gotten help in the past treatment but I felt like either it wasn't helping or I was just being stubborn and I just didn't feel like going through it anymore but I've had I had thoughts of taking my own life um at one point I actually did want to die and this day was um a while back this when I was living with my parents and uh, me and my mother, we didn't get along. We was always fighting and stuff. She would always threaten to kill me at times, but you know how parents use that tactic, so you can stop acting up. Um, I was one of them dudes that either A, didn't buy the tactic, or B, in this case B, took them on the tactic because I had enough. So one day, we get to an argument about something that I didn't do. Later turns out that I didn't do it. But didn't I get an apology? Did I get an apology? No, of course not, because she's an adult and adults aren't wrong. Um, but anyway, turns out that I just had enough that day. That day I had enough. So I go to the kitchen, open the drawer, take out the big ass butcher knife. Now, thinking about it now, I'm wondering, why the fuck does she have a butcher knife in there? Like, it's not like she makes anything big to use a butcher knife or something. Or maybe there are other reasons to use a butcher knife. I don't know. Or maybe she was making shit that required a butcher knife. Like, I, I, I really don't know. Right? To this day, I'm still puzzled why she even had the shit. But, I remember grabbing it. I set it down on the table. And I told her, if you're gonna kill me, do it. Right? Do it. Like, I was literally, I was ready to die that day. I, I had enough. Alright? I was always trapped in my room. I couldn't go out. I really couldn't do much. And I got, I just had enough of her shit. So I'm like, you're gonna kill me, do it. I was ready to die. She picks up the butcher knife. She starts going like this. Just waving freaking in front of me like she's actually gonna do it. She ain't gonna do it. And you know how parents, like, when, when the kid act up and they grab something and they be like, yo, keep talking shit. Keep talking shit. I'm gonna beat your ass. I'm gonna beat you. What? Say it again. Say what? You want a cookie? You want a cookie? I got your cookie right here, nigga. You know what I mean? Uh, like that, like you know, you know how parents do. Some, some of you guys, you probably got parents did that shit to you. Um, but yeah, she went like that. She wasn't gonna do. It. She was doing scared shit out of me and said, nah, but I wasn't scared. I'm like, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. I didn't care. Then my father came in. He heard about all of it. He heard all the commotion. Then he separates us, and um, he came to my room. I remember I was near the window. I had my head like this down. I was yelling and screaming, saying that, yo, I hate that bitch. I hate that bitch. I can't stand her. I hate that bitch. I think I said that I wanted her to die too. Like, yo, I hope she died. I can't recall, but I do remember saying that I hate her and I was just freaking crying and stuff. And after I calmed down, I think maybe a day or two later, child services that came through, either my mother or my father said something. Don't remember. But, they um, 
had an investigation. Then a few days later, I got taken out, put in the false alarm. At first, I regretted it. Well, I really shouldn't say regret, but I wasn't pleased with it. But then after a while, I kind of got accost accustomed to it. Because my false parents, they were really cool. The only thing they, they really ask is don't do anything stupid. Don't do no dumb shit. And as long as you're, you behave well, you can pretty much do whatever you want. You want to go out here with your friends? That's cool. You know what I mean? Um, so they were really cool about it. And it, it was great. I had more freedom. I could actually build up some sort of freaking social life. Um, I was still a bit of a badass with school, freaking cutting class and shit. But I think that was like my last year of high school that I got sent to a uh, foster home. Um, but yeah, after that, I believe that my mental state changed a bit. Like I still had depression, like I said, I've had depression for over 15 years. I still have it now. But I think after that, it gave me a new look in life where it's like, shit gets bad, I can succeed. So that's why when I try to do something and I fail, um, I would really get mad, I would bring myself down, I would have pity parties, seek attention, have people tell me like, yo man, you're good, you can still do this, you can blah, 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 all that. But even if I was to quit something, I would like always come back because I hated leaving something unfinished. Hated leaving something unfinished. And I didn't want to let the people that said that I couldn't do something actually be right. Cause that type of person I am. Like if if somebody says something to me, like I, I felt like at time I had to say I gotta say something back. And I think oh maybe like a while ago so I asked my father for five dollars and he said, nah man, you grown, you got you got your own apartment and shit, you only five dollars and I called him doodle head. Like I called my own dad doodle head because he gave me five dollars. <laughs> uh, but um by, by the way, don't call your parents to heads. Especially if you're still there with them, because that's probably an ass with you. You gotta come to. And then you then you gonna come to me talking about that to do that shit. No. No, I'm not responsible for that ass with you, right? You did that shit on your own. But anyway, uh I just don't like leaving things un unfinished. And the experience from that where my life didn't get taken that day. Um it gave me a, uh, another outlook and just made me not want to freaking quit. And depression, man, it it really hinders you from doing stuff that you want to do. Like, I feel like if it wasn't for this, if I didn't get into competitive smash, which for those that don't know me, that's what I do. I'm, uh, I, uh, I'm in the competitive smash community. I play on Peach and Daisy. And um, my whole goal since getting into competitive smash in 2006 with Melee was to be a top smash player. I feel like if it wasn't for that, for all this depression nonsense, I took better care of myself, gone through a treatment and everything, I probably would be one of the top smash players right now. But um, depression all that shit held me back. And stuff that could be fixed if I was to lose a match. I decided to ignore it and just get really upset, really down, really depressed, blame myself, have pity parties, cry for attention, all, all, all that shit. Call me back, man. But it's never too late, though. It's never, it's never too late, man. I'm telling you that right now, it's never too late. That's why I had to, like, um, give up competitive smash, stop going to tournaments. It's been like this for, like, maybe two and a half years now. Alright? And I just want to get better so I can come back positive mindset, have the depression gone, and then come back and I could actually really play the game and go out there and start busting ass and let people know the shit that I can do that I should have done freaking years back. Alright? So, um, with all that that I've been through, all the shit, wanting to die, everything, I just kept trying like once I hit that foster home man yeah I was upset this and that like I got shipped off to a freaking another family it, it kind of just opened up my eyes after a while man it really did and one thing that I want you guys to take with you is don't let people who say you can't do shit or wish misfortune on you win 
right? If you commit suicide, you're letting people get away with freaking murder, right? You're letting people get away with murder. And people getting away with murder is not cool because they say all this shit to you and you start feeling bad, you feel hopeless. Like, you know what? That's the case. What's the point of freaking living? Like that night when I wanted my mother to take my own life, I'm like, I ain't care. I'm like, just fucking do it. I don't care. I, I really wanted to die that day. So, um, you, if you take your own life, n nothing really gets done. You let all these assholes win, and they're going to continue being assholes to, to freaking other people. All right? And then that's it. All right? Don't, don't, don't. Just keep, keep going. If you have the physical ability to achieve something that you want, whether it's happiness or... In my case, trying to be a top smash player, you know, keep keep going, keep trying. If you have to take a break, take a break. Talk to friends, people who are um, uh, do the same thing that you do. Like I go on VR chat and I play people. Uh, well, we really can't play the game because virtual reality. But I meet people there, and really my main goal on VR is to make people laugh. That's what I do. Sometimes I'll be in the butt of the joke. I'll put myself in the line of fire. Just people could crack jokes on me or I look like a freaking clown. Just to have people laughing, giggling, having a good time. That's what I care about. Especially the lifestyle that I came from. That's, that's all I care about. I just care about making people laugh. And back when I was living with my parents, even having depression, all that shit that was going on, there was one thing that I would do. One thing that I would do that kept me sane. And that was drawing. Like, I couldn't go outside, playing handball with my friends. I, I love to do that, and I couldn't do it. It was to a point where, dude, I love going to school. And I hated summer vacations. Only because I get to get the hell out the house and see my friends and just do stuff. Other than learn freaking math problems that I'm probably never going to use in life once I finish school. You know, it was to that point where I hated summer vacations. When someone was coming through, I hated that shit. It was that bad. But even after with all that, I would just always draw. I would make comic strips. I would create stories. I would be trapped in my own little world. My own little world that I created. And that kept me going through the whole time I was living with my parents until that incident happened and then ACS child services came through and just took me out of the house. Right? But don't. And don't don't let people get away with this shit. No. Because when they say all this stuff and you become successful, ooh, what that feeling? Oh my god! Like if your parents say, "Oh man, you always playing freaking video games, man. Why don't you do something to like become a doctor, become a lawyer, shit like that?" And then it turns out that you're like a top streamer, a top YouTuber, and you're making more money than your parents are. Is massive, you know. So at the end of the day, keep keep going because if you take your own life, not only are you giving up on yourself and the people freaking care and worry about you, you're also letting these assholes win. All right, these people who are trying to put you down, you're letting them get away with it, and if they get away with it. They gonna get away with more of this nonsense with other people. Can't be having that, man. We gotta fight back. So for somebody that has depression and anxiety, I'm I'm just not gonna let that shit happen. Nah, mm -mm. nah, I can't, man. I can't, man, because that person that decides to take their life or their whatnot, they could be something great, make other people happy. And people who have the same thoughts, they can change it. And that's great, man. We, we need more people like this in this corrupted world. We, we really do, man. All right? We do. So, that's basically all that I wanted to say. All right? Um, for my regular viewers and subscribers, uh, thanks for watching. If you're having these type of thoughts or feel the same way, hopefully this video will motivate you to keep fighting all right because somebody's trying to put you down and you still get you still kicking you still trying they're messing up because their job is to put you down you still going all right you're not down so yeah they fucking up 
and we gonna let them know. Especially when we achieve what we want to. That's that, all right? So yeah, thanks. Thanks for that. And for those that randomly saw the video, you don't know anything about me, first time watching, um, hopefully this vid has helped you out. If it did, great. I really don't care if this video goes viral. If I get freaking a thousand views, 14 views, whatever. As long as the video helps out at least one person that is thinking this way and it changes their mind to eventually changing their life to be happy, that's all I give a fuck about. I don't care about making money off this shit. I just care about making people happy and saving them from the corrupted mindset that anxiety and depression cause. Because I'm trying to save myself right now. Alright, because I got, I got that. I'm trying to save myself. I want you guys to do the same thing. I ain't quitting. So, you should you. Alright. Take care of yourselves. And have a good day.